I want to direct you guys towards a couple of videos here. This interview right here, which was, when was it? Streamed a couple of days ago on the Boxing Voices channel with Deontay Wilder and his manager Shelly Finkel. In this interview, right around here, the 42 minute mark, Deontay Wilder is talking about leaving Anthony Joshua in the dark. Now, I've partially come to Deontay Wilder's defense and I've come out and said things recently like, I don't think Deontay Wilder is scared of Anthony Joshua. I don't think he's scared to step in the ring. But given Deontay Wilder's behavior now, stating that he's intentionally intending to leave Anthony Joshua in the dark and not fight him. He's come out and said that Anthony Joshua is desperate to fight him. This has come out of Deontay Wilder's own mouth. Said that Joshua was desperate for the fight, for the unification. How can somebody be a coward and running for you and then the next minute you're saying he's desperate for the unification and I'm going to leave him in the dark and not going to fight him? When he comes out and says things like that, I start to question my own statements. I start to question... Maybe Deontay Wilder is actually scared of Joshua. Maybe the performance against Fury that Wilder put in, because he struggled badly in that fight. Maybe that's knocked his confidence. Maybe he's thinking, you know what? It's not time for the Joshua fight right now because I struggled with Fury. Fury's a slick boxer, but he's not a big puncher. AJ's better than me technically. And he can really punch. I could afford to make mistakes against Fury because the counters weren't hurting me. But against AJ, I can't afford to make mistakes because the counters could leave me stretched out flat on my back. Maybe that's what he's thinking. How else do you explain what he's saying in this interview, people? I want to hear from the Wilder fanboys. How can you explain this man coming out of his mouth talking about I'm going to keep Anthony Joshua in the dark. Not fight him. I thought this guy wanted one face, one name, one champion. What was it? What happened to all that? Anybody supporting what Deontay Wilder is saying here is not a real boxing fan. Facts. That's why people are putting up the dark symbols here. Facts. If you're a real boxing fan, you want to see an undisputed fight. I have to shout out Ben Davison because in this interview right here, this is actually a, a podcast, episode one. Everybody, if you're not already subscribed to Boxing Social, go and subscribe. Boxing Social is a fantastic channel. Rob Tebbit, in my humble opinion, is the best interviewer in the business right now. At the very least, the best boxing interviewer in the UK right now, if not <clears throat> in the entire industry, in my opinion. He started this podcast, which was fantastic. It featured Dave Allen, uh, obviously Ben Davison, Anthony Yard, McGuigan, Mauricio Suleiman, Renault Quinlan. That's just the first episode. You know, fantastic job that Rob Tebbett has done with his podcast. But in episode one, Ben Davison comes out and says, that he believes Joshua versus Wilder should happen before Wilder versus Fury 2. Tyson Fury's own trainer is coming out saying that, saying that we need an undisputed fight first between Joshua and Wilder, and then Fury fights the winner of the undisputed fight. This is exactly what I suggested. To me, this is the far more logical route to take if you're interested in establishing who is the best at heavyweight, get these belts unified and have them fight Tyson Fury. That's the route we need to go down. So I applaud Ben Davison for suggesting the very same thing. It means a lot coming from him because he's not playing into the, no, not the nonsense that a lot of the fans are carrying on with, where they're acting like Fury and Wilder should basically frees Joshua out of the picture. Ben Davison, by saying that Joshua and Wilder should fight each other in the winner fights Fury, you know, given who he is, it means a lot because 
that's what's best for the heavyweight division if you're a real boxing fan. You want to see the best fight the best. Are we to sit here and believe that we don't need unifications, that we don't need Wilder versus Joshua, that we don't need Joshua versus Fury? Are we to sit here and believe all that? And rather than see the guys square off in the ring and find out for a fact who's better, we're just going to pick a side and assume that our guy can beat everybody and nobody can touch him. Is that what we're supposed to do? So again, shout out to Ben Davison. It's the most sensible approach as far as I'm concerned. Let's unify all the belts, have the winner fight Fury, and then we'll know who's the best, at least for now, at least until somebody else steps up to the plate and knocks <coughs> the undisputed champion off his perch. But for now, let's get that on. So definitely go watch these two videos. I really want to hear from the De Deontay Wilder fanboys. How do they explain all this? Winningly and intentionally saying, I'm going to freeze Joshua out. <laughs> and the, the irony is, freeze Joshua out of what exactly? Yeah, you've got one belt and he does want it. But he's got three belts. He's making a hell of a lot more money than you, Deontay. What are you freezing him out of exactly? Right now, people are talking about Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Yeah. One thing I have to agree with, with what Tyson Fury said, is that Tyson Fury said he, he fetched Deontay Wilder out of the darkness. His dad said it as well. It's true. He fetched Deontay Wilder out of obscurity. Tyson Fury did that. Without Tyson Fury, Wilder wouldn't have fought on pay-per-view this year. If it wasn't... It, it, <clears throat> look, the only way for Deontay Wilder to fight on pay-per-view is to fight a Brit. Facts. That was the only way he was going to fight on pay-per-view this year is fighting a Brit. Either Fury or Joshua. No other way this man was going to fight on pay-per-view. So he has to thank Anthony Joshua for the beef that built his profile up to, to a certain point, And he has to thank Tyson Fury for allowing him to have his first pay-per-view. Yeah, without those two Brits, this guy wouldn't be eating. I mean, not on the level he's eating now. By far the biggest payday of his career that he got against Tyson Fury. But yet he acts like he's the A-side or something, this guy. I don't, I don't know where Deontay Wilder's mind is at. I don't know who's whispering in his ear and what kind of nonsense they're telling him. But someone needs to get him back down on this planet. <laughs> Seriously, people. <clears throat> I don't like the things coming out of Wilder's mouth because I want to see him and Joshua square off. That's it. The offer's there. They've offered to pay you more money than you've ever been paid before. What's the justification for turning it down at this point? Throw me a bone here, people. How is Joshua still ducking when Wilder says he's going to freeze him out? When Wilder says Joshua was desperate for the fight? When, when, when Joshua apparently has just made him another offer? How is Joshua ducking? April 13th is the date. It's there. You know, Deontay Wilder, I rate him as a fighter. He's a dangerous man. As I say, at the negotiating table, as a businessman, he's not smart. He's not bright. And even as a fighter, I'm wondering if his confidence has been knocked by this Tyson Fury fight. And again, shout out to Ben Davison for, for talking sense, you know, saying something reasonable that we need a unification. And then the undisputed fighter takes on Fury. Makes perfect sense to me. And you know what? I want the undisputed to take on Fury. Not because of this lineal business. Because I think lineal is overblown and overhyped. I want the undisputed to take on Fury. Because Fury just had a draw against Wilder. So at the very least, he can be viewed as just as legitimate as Wilder. At the least. He just had a draw with him after coming off a two and a half year layoff 
losing over 100 pounds in weight, having two tune-up fights against absolute nobodies, not being anywhere near his best and still getting a draw with Wilder. When Wilder was active, when Wilder was 100%. And I know Wilder's been talking about injuries and this, that and the other. Listen, he was far closer to 100% than Tyson Fury. Let's at least all agree on that. So based upon Fury's performance against Wilder, and the fact that he did end Klitschko's reign, the undisputed champion does need to go see Tyson Fury to make it truly undisputed. Because that's what undisputed means. Undisputed means beyond dispute. If Joshua and Wilder fight and somebody picks up all four belts, there's still going to be a dispute. What about Tyson Fury? He really beat Deontay Wilder. That's what a lot of people are going to say. So let's see the undisputed guy fight Fury then. Then we'll know. That's, see, if you're a real boxing fan, that's what you want. If you're a real boxing fan, you're not going to support any of this. Oh, we're going to freeze this guy out or freeze that guy. You know, that's nonsense. You're a fanboy if you, you, you support that kind of thing. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys feel in the comment section below. It's Hatman I'm out. <clears throat> Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.